feudalism. You know, medieval governance. It, it's kind of hard to summarize feudalism in a simple way that accurately encompasses how complex it is, but it's basically a combination of the legal, economic, and political systems that were adopted by most of Europe during medieval times. The main feature of feudalism is manorialism, which is basically the name for the distribution of land ownership among a hierarchy. The person at the top, usually a monarch, owns the land, but leases out part of it to a lower title of nobility, like a duke or a prince, and then a portion of that is put under control of a baron or a lord, but then the majority of people would be peasants. People who did not own the land, but made an agreement with the, well, landlord, to be leased a home in exchange for their labor, usually on a farm. Often they'd also be given a small share of the fruits of their labor, but of course the landowners got the lion's share. While manorialism was common in many parts of the world at many time periods, feudalism is usually associated with medieval Europe due to its intertwined connections with European political structures and culture of that time period. But it's not unheard of to see the term used with the shogunate era of Japan, for example. You can make much longer videos debating on what counts as feudalism and what doesn't, but for the purposes of this video, I'm referring to medieval European feudalism, which actually ended in 2008. That's not me making some hyperbole or some old law people forgot about but no one followed. There was an actual legal feudal political entity that was only reformed in 2008. Where was this last bastion of feudalism hiding? How did it even last this long? What did 21st century feudalism even look like? We're going to find out. But first, I want to talk about this video sponsor, Ground News. It's always important to keep up with current events, but even more importantly, it's good to know what perspectives the news are coming from. You gotta have better critical thinking and be aware of bias after all. Ground News is a platform that makes it easy to swipe between headlines to discover which details are being emphasized, exaggerated, or even left out entirely in a news article. You can also see how the news is being spread or ignored across the political spectrum with their tools like with the blind spot feed. Some stories just aren't being covered by everyone. Oh look, a story that's actually balanced in coverage. That's very rare. I appreciate being able to filter the news this way, and if you click the link below to try Ground News, you can get it for free, or you can subscribe to get access to all the features you see here and support a team of independent media outsiders working to make the news landscape just a bit more transparent. Thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. So the last place to abolish feudalism was the island of Sark in the English Channel, owned by the United Kingdom. Considering how complex the political and bureaucratic structure is of the United Kingdom, I can't say I was surprised in the slightest to learn feudalism managed to hide somewhere in its realm. To be more precise, the island of Sark is a fief within the bailiwick of Guernsey, which is a crown dependency of the United Kingdom. While most people are familiar with the UK being made up of multiple countries within it, there are also a few small territories that are legally their own distinct political entities outside of the United Kingdom, but are still under the same crown. In a way, that in of itself is a leftover of feudalism. Royal titles for ownership of certain lands being things you possessed rather than just administering them as a territory within your state is how medieval feudal monarchies ran things. You'll recall a few weeks ago I made a video on royal titles discussing about how that caused many monarchs to have titles that stretched on forever. In the case of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, they along with the Bailiwick of Jersey make up what are collectively referred to as the Channel Islands. Going back to medieval history, there was a duchy in northern France called the Duchy of Normandy, and they ruled these islands. Famously, William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy in 1066, claimed the English crown and, well, conquered England to acquire it. Thanks to feudalism, he was both the Duke of Normandy and the King of England, but this action would end up not only changing England's culture, language, society, and history forever, but would also be a foreign policy headache for several centuries. Normandy was, in theory, loyal to the French crown, but then the man in charge of Normandy is also the English king, who isn't loyal to anyone else. This would cause issues on who was really loyal to whom, and there would be constant back and forth fighting over other duchies between the French and English crowns. In 1204, Normandy, for the time being, was given back to France, but there was an agreement for the English crown to keep these islands. While England and France would later on fight the Hundred Years' War over control of France once and for all, these islands remained English the entire time, and were effectively still treated differently in the same way Normandy was, due to feudal power structures. 
they were relatively isolated and not exactly the focus of the English crown. They had really small populations of mostly peasants. Their separate administration was a sort of necessity because of how far away and less connected to England they were. Even as Europe began to move out of the medieval age, there was simply no reason to change anything. It should be noted that feudalism was still common in most of Europe up until even as late as the 18th century. A lot of people don't really associate the Age of Enlightenment coexisting with peasants, but in many places it did. One of the accomplishments of the French Revolution was the final abolition of feudalism within France. Meanwhile, in the Russian Empire, you famously had serfdom existing until 1861 when it was finally abolished. You can make poetic comparisons of poorly treated workers being taken advantage of by wealthy landowners and compare it to feudalism, but remember that these things are still feudalism because of the traditional royal laws that were allowing them in the first place. However, the Channel Islands would eventually have reforms like the rest of the United Kingdom did over time. I mentioned that Sark was a part of the Bailiwick of Guernsey. Sark was specifically a medieval fief given out by Queen Elizabeth I in 1565, establishing what would be called the Seigneurs of Sark, Seigneur being French for Lord. Basically, a person owned the island in the same way a feudal lord did, and that title was hereditary. This meant for all intents and purposes, while it was a part of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, Sark also had its own politically distinct administration. In 1949, Guernsey adopted a democratically elected parliament, but that did not include Sark, as a fief could only end if either the crown revoked it for breaking the deal, or the fief holder sold it to someone else. So they were still able to continue being a feudal island. If you wanted to buy or sell a house in the island, you needed the seigneur's permission, and you had to give him one thirteenth of whatever money was made in the transaction. Only the seigneur could own pigeons or an unfixed dog. By decree, cars were not allowed on the island, and they had to use tractors or horses to move goods to the ships that would deliver them elsewhere. Because of this, they had these for ambulances. The Signor got to wear a silly outfit and collect all property tax for himself. All of this as long as he kept the conditions of keeping the island free of pirates, and paid a yearly royal fee of a pound 79. I guess the deal didn't figure inflation. Considering how quaint and tiny the island is, how come no one invaded it in the 8th centuries since it became English? Well, there were actually two invasions. Once by the Nazis during World War II between 1940 and 1945, but another second attempted invasion by one man in 1990. Yes, really. In 1990, a man named Andre Gards dropped off flyers and posters on the island, warning that he planned to invade them tomorrow at noon. While most people thought it was a joke, the island's volunteer constable decided to take it seriously. It turns out the next day, Andre Guards showed up in military gear and an automatic weapon, apparently deciding to be a one-man army. The constable pretended to be a weapon admirer and asked him if he could admire his weapon, in which he said yes. Upon seizing the weapon, the constable punched the man in the nose and single-handedly saved the island from invasion. That gun to this day is apparently in their local museum. The final dramatic saga of the feudal island of Sark, though, has to be the Barclay Brothers arc. The Barclay Brothers were two billionaire business brothers from Britain, notable for owning the Daily Telegraph, who one day bought a tiny island off of Sark that was under Sark's jurisdiction, which meant they had to pay an extra £179,000 to the Seigneur of Sark in tax. Just like any other time when any billionaire has to pay an extra tax, the Barclay brothers decided to put way too much time and investment into ways to never have to pay that tax again, and they began to slowly try and influence the island to their benefit. They began buying businesses and hotels in the island, they tried to lobby the courts to get the seigneur's powers reduced or to change the terms of the tax they'd have to pay. All of it led to mixed success, but their ultimate plan was to start a campaign to introduce democracy to the island to undermine the Seigneur, and eventually use their influence and money to buy out the election. After all, you don't want them taking their businesses elsewhere, do you? The Barclay brothers decided to threaten to take up the island's feudal system with the European Court of Human Rights to have the Seigneur removed. Before there was even a decision, Sark decided to go along with it and hold a referendum. 56% of the island voted for democracy, so in 2008 they officially ended the feudal system on their island and held their first election. With this democratic reform, there would now be a 30-member council that would effectively serve as the island's own parliament. One seat would be permanently for the seigneur, one seat would be permanent for the local judge, but the other 28 seats would be elected democratically in island-wide votes with universal suffrage. 
However, the efforts of the Barclay brothers backfired, and their constant meddling on the island actually irritated the residents, and as a result, none of their candidates won. The Barclay brothers then decided to be sore losers and pull out their investments of the island anyway, resulting in one-sixth of the population of the island now being unemployed. The brothers tried to protest the election because of the two permanent seats on the council, but to no avail. The backlash against them being sore losers caused them to quietly reverse their decision to remove their businesses and rehire those employees. Then in pattern with their usual behavior, they went back to having a low profile. Or at least as low as you can be being billionaire brothers owning a major publication. Okay, seriously, I feel like this island could be some sort of three-arc anime or something with how weird and over-the-top its history is for such a simple community. Someone get on that, I'd, I'd watch it. But anyway, since 2008, the island has continued making various reforms with their new democracy, while some traditions still remain, including having a seigneur in the first place. But overall, by technical definition, feudalism was finally abolished in Europe in 2008. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, but also if you want to support this channel, you can support it with my Patreon, but also we now have channel memberships open as well. The same benefits as Patreon, but there are also exclusive perks for live streams. If you're interested, just go to my channel and click the join button. Thank you all very much.